Welcome back, Zero K fans, to the last exhibition match for tonight. It's going to be Shaman Pluck versus Go Go Dancer, or just Dancer, as I tend to refer to them in all of my streams and casts and so forth, because I tend to avoid using clan tags, but Go Go Dancer is such a catchy way of saying it. Anyway, it's going to be on Icy Shell, a map which is not one I've seen in a while, but definitely a good map anyway. This map is pretty even, like, it's got the clusters. You have, you can start in the north or the south. As you can see, Dancer going for the center start, while Shaman Pluck going for a northeast, slightly more defensive start. So Dancer, very easily going to get four metal extractors. They're all about plus 1.8, so fairly typical. Shaman Pluck, a little bit of a harder time to expand they're going to have. But at the same time, that means it's going to be easier to defend, and this map is very open, as you can see. It's very flat. There's not a whole lot that can be done other than what's... You can't really go around stuff. This area here is not vehicle pathable, by the way. This area with the plus five metal extractor, that is not vehicle pathable. So that's at least one thing. And both players actually going for, I mean, it's flat, so vehicles are going to be very commonly used, but yeah, can't go up here. Oh, and Orphelius, a good equivalent to Immortal would probably be... Hmm... Thug, maybe? No, I don't know. The Immortal in StarCraft 2 is a really weird mechanic where it just reduces all damage down to a particular... Like, it maxes out at, like, 10 or 20 or something. So you can never deal more than that much damage in one shot, and nothing on 0k has a property like that. But in terms of overall roll, I guess either Thug or... Maybe Ravager? I don't know if Ravager really works. I think Immortals are a little bit more accurate than that. Hmm. I'd have to think about that. Anyway, thugs, I think, fit the build decently well. But, map has to get started, so let us begin. Yeah, Gogo -Go Dancer going for Light Vehicle Factory, while Shaman Pluck, and mentioned before, Gogo -Go Dancer likes going for Wolverine Felon Thug Ball. So we'll see probably that. While Shaman Pluck going in the other hand for Heavy Tank Factory, Shaman Pluck, previously known as Arch Shaman, Changed their name a while ago. I'm not sure why. There was a weird thing with Svartpluk a long time ago, and then Spireman changed their name to Firepluk, and then Arch Shaman changed their name to Shamanpluk. And at this point, it's sort of this weird thing where I don't know about Arch Shaman, but the other two are kind of I don't know. People use Pluks the same way people used to use Svire whatever, which was basically be wary of these guys. They tend to occasionally be a bit rude. That sort of the thing. So the Plucks, the Pluck name is not the most, not necessarily the most winsome of names, or at least the reputation isn't the most winsome of reputations. Not necessarily mean or jerks, but they have a tendency to not necessarily be considered the most, the most kind. There's a bit of a reputation of being slightly uncivil at times. But anyway, that aside, Shaman Bluk did manage to get a decent amount of damage with that Kodachi, but not a huge amount. Managed to get one Metal Extractor. No energy destruction. They closed the solar plants. That's decent, but Dancer is still ahead. While Shaman Bluk, on the other hand, they are... They're, kind of said, kind of behind. I mean, Dancer, they have an easier time building up Metal Extractors. A harder time holding them, yes. And Panthers will be coming in here as well. Shaman Bluk's going to have a slightly easier time... No, harder time. They're breaking in on the tough side. They're not breaking in on the same side as last time. This is going to be more difficult. And Dancer setting up defenses along here in a nice little triangle. And they also can easily choose. They can choose to go on both sides and expand both ways. Doesn't matter which one Shaman Blook picks. Dancer will still have an economic advantage. And at this point, Dancer has a pretty sizable one, too. And not even... Is that even reclaimed? No, it's not reclaimed from the looks of it. That's actually... Oh, it is reclaimed. Never mind. Yeah, it's... There we go. I'm blind. But yes, with Reclaim, they have an economic advantage. Otherwise, they're at economic parity. And Dancer has a decent amount of Reclaim to work from, too. So it's... Well, they might soon, if anything attacks them, they're going to have that. But like I said, they also have everything else position-wise. So all they need to do is either set up defenses or expand both sides. Either way. Either way, they'll be in a good spot. Okay, that's what I thought. So Orphelia is pointing out that Shaman Pluk is nice, is a nice person. Yeah, that's 
what I expect. I think they were just doing the Pluk thing because it was kind of a popular name. And there's something, I don't know, there's a nice resonance to Pluk. I mean, Svartopluk is the original one as far as I know. But Art Shaman, on the other hand, I think they're just hopping on the bandwagon because it just sounds kind of neat. There's something about that name that just sounds... I don't know what it really sounds like. Just got a nice ring to it. That's probably why they did it. Yeah, so sh I'm just saying, the name Pluk is... or the Pluk suffix is not... that does not have the best reputation. I think partly because Fireman decided to go and change their name to Fire Pluk. But yeah, I can I can live with weird things. Look, weird things are cool. And like I said, units can't easily vehicles can't easily get up here. This one actually, well, okay. As you can see, the purple is where the pathability is. There's a tiny little window where it's pathable. <laughs> they really just Shadow Pluck really just terraform that up. Wow. Just terraform up the metal extractor, so you could build it on top of there. Didn't quite terraform up the actual metal extractor point though. But anyway, that being said, Dancer is in a very comfortable position. I think Shaman Blook trying to take make sure the corners are not taken by Dancer. But who cares? Dancer's just taking the center, so it doesn't really matter that much because, well, the center now belongs to them. That's pretty much it. They own the center now. So at this point, I mean Shaman Blook taking the north side, and they're going to be in a pretty... They're going to still be in a better position if Dancer can't get rid of these Panthers. Which, they don't actually have to. The Panthers have been lured into the center, where they will soon deal some damage. Actually. Fairly annoyingly, too. But a leveler coming in to deal with that. Levelers being the counter, effectively, to Panthers. Like, Panthers cannot punch through the leveler's armor fast enough to stun them before the leveler's kills them. But the one thing that needs to happen after this geothermal plant, I suppose. Although, really, that's a little early for a geothermal plant. But the one thing that needs to happen at some point will be expanding along the sides. Dancer really needs to expand at this point. They've just now gotten enough energy that overdrive is a reality. They might want to actually connect all these things with pylons or with solar plants. But yeah, they're going to want to make more metal extractors pretty soon. Oh, I see. It looks like they have, yeah, they have the whole chain set up here with wind generators. They want to get over to the plus 5, and of course they do, it's actually a plus 8, it's a plus 9 right now, thanks to the overdrive, just from the extra energy from the geothermal plant. It's not even in the same grid, just the fact that the geo plant is taking care of all the energy needs of the factory and the constructors, means that all the remaining energy, that's able to be used by these wind generators. Like, all the energy the wind generators are generating in this grid, which is actually about 25, being poured directly into here. This is just the wind generators pushing this, actually wind generators and the solar plant, but yeah, that's just the wind generators, and it's already doubling a plus five. That geothermal plant, even without the connection, is still doing a lot of work to get Dancer's economy up very strong. But now these panthers are being a bit of a pain. The wolverine mine's not able to deal a huge amount of claws, rather, that's what they're called. Claws not able to deal a huge amount of damage. Nothing really built out, though, so Dancer, having not gone for a very open strategy, means that they actually have a much easier time dealing with the panthers. The levelers are out of position, though. These panthers are going to get some shots in. One or two are going to die thanks to the defenders, but that's not going to be enough. Actually, it is just barely. They are chased away, surprisingly enough. Dancer decides not to do that, and at this point, the Geo Plant is connected. What are we looking at for overdrive now? Plus, okay, plus 12, but it doesn't really matter. The point is, every one of these metal extractors has been buffed up. So the overdrive is going very well for Dancer. I mean, this center extractor here, the fact that it's gone from plus 5 to plus 10. This map, that center extractor, is a huge deal, because look at this. Shaman Pluck has the entire north side, everything along the north side, while Dancer just has the center extractor, four along the south, and some overdrive. And they are at parity with half the metal extractors, because they had the plus five, and it's overdriven. That is a big deal. And it also means that there's far less... Okay, at this point, at this point, Dancer easily has the territory advantage. They can take this. They will, they should, they, they own this territory, they just haven't completely conquered it yet. And now they are. So yeah, Dancer chose the right side. The left side, not that vulnerable, they could easily take it, but they don't have the confidence, and I don't blame them. 
to be able to actually maintain this, to defend it well. But they can defend the eastern side. They've focused on that. They have enough metal extractors to deal with that. They can just take all this and then from there, just, I guess, build a couple more pylons and overdrive them too. Why not? At this point. They seem to be going for a very overdrive-oriented strategy. And I know I mentioned in the last, not, not the last game, the game before, or no, a few games before, I think it was a dancer game too, where they were going f no, it wasn't a dancer game, it was the one on... Oh wow, it was the first game on Sands of Time with Dorkiak, who tried to do a more defensive strategy. The difference being that Dork oh, there's the Thelon ball coming up. Or the ball, the shield ball. Dorkiak was in a corner on a very hilly map, and didn't really move out much to defend. Wow, Scorch is coming in as well to attack. Shamanpluck losing the northwest. Nice burst out. This is why I was saying that Dork, well, well Aquim's response to Dorkiak not going for a naked expansion was wise, because when this happens. But the problem was, Sands of Time isn't really, it doesn't have a big metal extractor like this to really make a payoff. And it also doesn't have, also point out that Scorches do lose to Panthers. But yeah, it doesn't have this to really have a nice payoff. And it also, because of the fact that you're in a corner, like, Dancer started in the center. They started in a rather aggressive position. And they can easily expand to either corner, so they can take a stronger economy later on. Starting from the corner means you have to push out in all directions, and you have nowhere really to go back to, and nowhere to go to the side to. It's much harder to spread out. It's easier to defend, but harder to spread out, so you have to focus more on spreading out. So going for a defensive strategy from the corner on a map that's very hilly, that's it's way too easy to just basically cede the rest of the map to your opponent. Whereas here, Dancer already started in a position where they were they were very forward, and then they worked backwards. They worked they're forward here, and then they worked backwards, and they also worked forward in the center, and then they worked backwards again. They're being conservative, but they're not being over-defensive. They're just not pushing themselves in a situation where they can easily be crushed by Shaman Plux forces. But they're doing it in a really good way. Like this, this is how you do this sort of strategy. This is how you need to have something to really overdrive that's really important. And you need to make sure that you are still taking territory. You're just taking territory in a relatively safe way. And from time to time harassing, as we saw Dancer do with the Scorchers. But yeah, that's the thing. There's When you have that plus five, that is a big deal. And now we see Blackdowns coming in as well. Dancer looking like they're really pushing out. Because, yeah, the whole goal of doing this is that you want to make sure your opponent can't destroy your economy as you build up your military. And then you want to burst out. Especially if you're really lucky, your opponent will actually get baited. Oh, and that this is why we see the overdrive, or the overdrive, the terraform is a good idea. But, yeah, the, unfortunately, the rec Oh, man, the overdrive chain just got broken to the plus five. That is painful. Plus five mechs itself has not been hit, but the overdrive chain was broken. But anyway, as I was saying, the important thing about doing it this way... Ah, the plus five is down. Still, that did a lot for Gogo -Go Dancer. They have enough at this point. They're, they're still even. But yeah, the reason why it's a big deal is that when you have... When you have this setup where you're a bit more defensive and your opponent thinks they can expand... If they go for a naked expand, as Shaman Pluck is done, although they still have some units to defend, but still, if they go for a naked expansion, the point is essentially to have enough that you're still kind of at parity. You know that late game, if they overdrive everything, they'll beat you. But you want to burst out in the mid game before they have overdrive on their massive acquisitions and all their territory. They just have raw metal extractors, and then you win that way because you have well-defended, overdriven metal extractors, and they don't. And you wipe out all their naked expansion because you've built up a massive army behind these not super conservative, but conservative enough defenses. And then you burst out. And that's what Dancer's doing. I still think that another shot with Scorchers would actually do a lot of damage. Although these two Panthers are being a bit of a pain for that. That was still a good idea. And Shaman Book having switched over to an air factory, adding a couple Swifts into their repertoire. And that's about it. A lot of Pillagers, though. Artillery is the counter. They do want to use those. The only problem is because of all the damage. I mean, they've completely wrecked this area up. The Panthers cannot move through. I think that might actually be vehicle impassable. Yes! This area, there's one small corridor that is vehicle pathable at this point. Everything else is completely unpathable. But right now, Shaman Pluck has to go around this western side. 
There are quite a few defenses in the way, and also these Black Dons. If... Oh, does Dancer know? Does Dancer know? Dancer knows! Dancer knows there's something going along here, along the eastern side of the map. Are they, when are they going to move to take advantage of it, though? They're not building anything right now. That's actually really surprising. Why aren't they building anything right now? And these Black Dons are in a bit of a risky position. Getting rid of one of the Pillagers, actually. Nearly killing a second, but the Swifts causing a bit of a problem. Panthers moving in here, getting rid of the Lotuses. The Lotus is not focusing on any of the Panthers. A few of them going down and managing not even to stun one of them. The Black Dons, however, are in position to deal with the Panthers. Not a whole lot to counterattack. And the western side, yeah, some defenses were destroyed, but no real damage. Unfortunately, one of the Black Dons got stunned out, but even then, the Felon Ball is up. Felon Ball is up. The Panthers' self-stun is a major problem. And I think Gogo Dancer's burst out is now real. However, they are they are accessing. They need to build more. They are now building more. Okay, good. Building more. They are repairing. But yeah, they need to build more. These caretakers, useful in repair, might want to build a few more of them. And once again, getting the metal extractor, getting a nice Aegis or Aspis rather. Really? They want the mobile form? Interesting. Okay, I expected that would be the non-mobile form, but no matter. Yeah, that's up. And despite the wyvern. Actually, the Wyvern, despite the Chainsaws, doing fine. But still, these these Panthers don't have much of a chance. Not a whole lot of them. They can sort of stun out the Black Dons, maybe a little bit, but not easily. The only problem is the Black Dons can't easily hit them either. But still, a nice distraction as the Wolverines, and the Wolverines take the west side as well. The eastern side now just a pockmarked mass of craters, completely impassable to vehicles, or impassable for vehicles. So that's effectively perfectly well defended. Now on the eastern, now the western side looks like Gogo Dance is going to take that as well and just slowly but surely get bigger and bigger. At this point, their economy is well, they're still rivaling Shaman Book, and Shaman Book hasn't gone for as much overdrive. So if Gogo Dance remembers to relink the center, which I don't know why they haven't, I don't think they realize that the center is not linked. And also, if they go to the west side as well, take that now that they're starting to defend it. I think they could easily, although it looks like they're just going to focus on Reclaim instead. Use that. Get the Reclaim. Build up Vandals for the Mobile Ant here. And Shaman Block throws in the towel, realizing there's no easy way to get through this. And that was game. A very interesting showcase. I think it's a good bookend, too. We saw the first match. We had... We had Dorklick, who decided, I'm going to go for a defensive strategy and not actually managing to do anything. And then at the end, we have Gogo -Go Dancer going, I'm going to go for a defensive strategy and showing us how it's done. So, thank you all for watching. I hope that was educational in terms of contrast. That is... Oh, and apparently there was possibility of Funnel Web at some point. I don't think so, because the replay is over. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. That is going to be it for me tonight. Bit of a longer stream than usual. But, once again, thank you for watching. And sorry, Orphelius, there was no felon. Actually, there was a felon. What are you talking about? There was a felon right here. There's actually at least one. Possibly two. Yeah, there's two felons. There's that one, and then there's this one over here. So yeah, there are two felons. Don't worry. Oh, funnel. No, sorry, there are no funnel webs. I apologize for that. I... Never got that far. Go-Go Dancer didn't have to. They already won. So anyway... Once again, thank you for watching. Have a good night. I hope that was educational, informative, entertaining. And that's it. So, yeah, thanks again for watching, and good night.